Okay, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to such a noble society on such an ugly thing like feet. It's the down under story. But even the Australians can teach us something. And so I think the untouched foot is something very interesting to explore because it serves also as a model for what's being said as ectopic uh, dipeter, or as it was already stated, dipeter's disease of the plantar fascia. It was in Munich when a surgeon first described the disease, not wearing a lederhose, but being named Günther or Georg Lederhose. So that's why it has the disease. In general terms, it's the plantar fascia. What's the problem? About 20% of the population which I examined for dipiturns has lederhose disease. And about 50% of those having lederhose will have dipiturns disease. So lederhose disease means a higher penetrance of having dipiturns diathesis. And if you are interested in dipiturns diathesis, you should go ahead and let your patients wash their feet to examine these feet. As I already made it yesterday in the evening clear to a colleague who knew his hands quite well in his feet, he didn't know that he had lederhose disease on his feet. So we are not aware of palpating our own feet. So let it do somebody else who is experienced. And that's part of the problem, having experienced, to test it, and actually look at it, and then get the interrelation into it. Certainly it's the same situation. You have nodules and cords on the foot sole, not being originating on the fourth and fifth digit, but in the first and the second, usually because they have different tension situations there. It's localized and it can have extending pain, it may impair with gait function, and it may impair with your profession and leisure time. The conservative treatment is certainly wait and see. You can have orthesis, orthosis being done to fit out if it's uh, more dramatic. Uh, if people can walk on it, they may not interfere with it. Some inject corticosteroids or non cellular anti-inflammatory drugs if it's painful. But usually, what has been described in the literature, it's the local excision, the wide excision, the subtotal fasciectomy, the total plantar fasciectomy. But it's not done by the, by the hand surgeons, it's done by the podiatrists. Have you ever met a podiatrist on a hand surgeon's meeting and vice versa? They don't communicate. They are sitting in a facet eye of our medical world and the holistic view is not done. It really. Uh, it's uh, a radiation therapist who looks into both sides to, jo to join these two experiences. So it's important, keep your eye on your feet. What's interesting, it's even more dramatic, the results of surgery are even worse than with the surgical data on the hand, probably because there are only very few knowledgeable people operating on it. It's so rare, the operation. It's done by lay people in the peripheral, and it's not uh, accumulated in centers. Uh, also, it's a different situation to stand on your foot while this foot should heal. So all these patients have dramatic problems healing after being operated. And they are taken out of their business for a long time. And at the long run, most of the feet really heal or have, a, let's say, a stable situation if they get subtotal excision, having a numb foot sole. That's not a good choice. And that's are uh, the data so far accumulated, very small series, not larger than 20, 25 cases. The largest series ever reported so far is by Lederhose, uh, the 50 cases which he mentioned in 1897 and then in 1902. So the question is, and considering all the wound healing problems they also have, uh, would there be a good chance to use radiation therapy because we because don't, we don't damage the skin, we know about our effects on keloids, we know about some effects on dipitrans. So the question is, would we improve on the progression uh, of the symptoms, would we improve in quality of life, and would we give a patient a chance who had failed surgery? So primarily dealing with the primary and the recurrent disease, and using the same radiation concept, 
using the same radiobiological concept to treat a progressive disease and not a dormant disease. So, uh, as I was accumulating the data on Dipitra, I was also accumulating the data on the feed, and I made, set up a documentation form what we could document for these cases. And a matter of fact, you document uh, gender, you uh, document the number of nodules and cords and so on. And so I found about a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of gender in the German population I was examining. The median age of these patients was 56 years. It was interesting that there was a high amount of bilateral involvement and a much lesser extent only one uh, limb involved. So we are having about 222 feet involved and only 54 uninvolved. As we were looking into the long-term analysis, we were looking only in patients with a minimum follow-up of one year, and then we came up with 138 patients. Um, 47 patients were serving as a control group as they did not want to receive radiotherapy, and the other one were not randomized because we have not established a dose concept. We just used the established concept 10 times 3 gray, given in the two fraction portions. So we are looking now at a total subset of 91 patients and 126 feet, which received local radiotherapy. This is the largest uh, data accumulation so far in the world on this issue. What's interesting, as you can see, we have 50% having morbus dipiturin. We have about one third being smokers. There were also uh, some who had knuckle pads, keloids, diabetes mellitus, some epilepsy or epileptic <laughs> medication. Uh, seven had liver disorders, including uh, former hepatitis and cirrhosis. And interesting enough, as 13 stated, so it's about, uh, let's say, 11, 12% that they had at some point in time a foot injury or foot trauma. <clears throat> so uh, then what were the symptoms? Patients were complaining about pressure. Uh, tension, pain while walking, or even pain while rest or extend, itching sensation, and walking difficulties. So what we did, we did a photographic documentation as we were not able to put the patient on a photocopy machine. So we did a photocopy with a ruler. We measured the size and the number of nodules and cords. We measured the symptoms with a visual analog scale, and we were watching the improvement subjectively. That's about uh, the first trial to do a photocopy, and we just left that because it's not a good way. It's much better to do photographs. And um, sometimes, it, if we were not clear, we were using MRI or we were using ultrasound. As you may see, these tiny nodules. Uh, oh, what's going on? No, it's, oh, here it is, OK. So you may see where the arrows, they're a little bit displaced. You see the little nodules underneath the skin. As you can appreciate, it's much deeper than in Dupitra. So for coverage of radiation volumes, you may need higher doses, and you may need to reach up to two centimeters in depth. Um, that's how we mark the lesions. And as you see, there are several nodules. And then we have our primary endpoints for prevention of disease progression. Progression meaning any nodule becoming larger, any nodule becoming new, any cord becoming new, any symptoms begin being increased. So that is progression. We want to avoid progression of this disease. Primary endpoint and secondary endpoints were the morphological changes and the functional parameters like gait and acute and chronic side effects. So overall, in these patients, all patients had nodules in all feet. Uh, the number of nodules we counted was 324, one to five per patient, and median about two by two centimeters in diameter, but up to 6.5 centimeter in diameter. We got 142 cords in 46 patients, so cords are much less, probably a sign for less advanced disease, and uh, with a median length of about three centimeters. Uh, radiotherapy was given, like in the hand, to the plantar fascia with a proximal and a distal uh, edge of about two centimeters and about one centimeter to the lateral part. You could give it with orthovoltage, kilovoltage, photons of 150K. If you don't have such a machine, you use a linear accelerator and you give electrons. This is technical notes, maybe too complicated for you, but I may be able to explain it later if you like. 
This is about the treatment portal we're using for these types of nodes, just as an example. And this is how we set up the treatment. As you can see, in the lower part of the foot, we place lead rubber plates onto areas which we don't want to irradiate. So we just irradiate the customized area. The similar way is done for the hands, by the way. And then that's a treatment setup. A treatment will last about three minutes for that type of setting. On a linear accelerator, it will probably last only 15 seconds. The setup is the most time you need. In general, our patients go in our department and within 15 minutes they have left the department. So it's a very simple setup of treatment. That's the concept of treatment we are giving from Monday through Friday, five treatments. We let them have a break of about eight to 10 weeks, sometimes it's 12 weeks, and then we're giving another series of five times three gray, and then we look for at least three and 12 months follow up, and thereafter we follow by phone or by photocopies or whatsoever we exchange. If necessary, in a relapse or a progression situation, the patient comes in and gets examined again. What we have observed in terms of dryness of skin and erythema, uh, itching, some of thought it's more in the operated lesions, so in the recurrent lesions, than in the primary lesions. But it's in this range acceptable with 20%. The chronic situation is in 15%. Again, it's a little paling, discrimination of the skin. It's dry, but it can be moisturized, it can be refetted. In terms of the outcome, we were having now a median follow up of almost six years. The primary endpoint, no progression, is achieved in 91% of the cases. We had only 11 cases which had progressive disease, and of those, 50% required then surgical procedures. Uh, but in general, we don't receive uh, we don't receive regression. We have about a one-to-one -one ratio between stabilizing the disease uh, in terms of sizes of nodules and numbers of nodules, and about another uh, part is the objective remission. That means going down in size. So it's interesting to see what happens with the nodules. We have a reduction in nodule numbers of minus 33 percent. Even the size of the nodule is reduced, and most dramatically in the younger patient, especially in the child I was treating, which was shrunk from six to uh, six times seven centimeter down to two by three centimeter after about nine years now. Then the same is true for the cords. We have a reduction of cords, so a softening apparently of the tissue in 45% of the cases, and also the cord lengths shrunk. With regard to symptoms, it's the most dramatic response. We are seeing responses in these patients between 60 and 80% of all the symptoms being phrased by the patient, which then comes up really to the true satisfaction of these patients, because they won't suffer pain, they won't suffer tension, probably due to the release of and due to the shrinkage of the size, and so the hollowness of the foot can uh, have its own natural situation. So in general, uh, when we ask our patient were they satisfied, uh, we got a response of 84%, pretty much well corresponding to the numbers with the stabilization or the, uh, or the improvement of the treatment in long-term follow-up. And uh, I'm pretty sure that with this untouched area, no hand surgeon has ever touched the foot. So we are not competing on the foot. So at least give me the foot to demonstrate you that radiation is an effective field. And maybe there may be some similarities between the plantar fascia and the, and the hand, but certainly uh, most of us stand on our foot and we don't make handstands. Uh, but hopefully this will be uh, one of those intriguing talks which tell us these disciplines have to communicate with each other. We have to show each other where we have our limits. And certainly, I don't want to step in in a very complicated surgical situation because I probably have no means to deal with that situation, which is scarring. But maybe we have something to deal in a recurrent setting. When through the recurrent operation, we may induce new fibroblasts to do the repair process. And in this repair process, we may interfere. But we have to do it smartly and we have to be intelligent enough to uh, show us how we examine patients, how we have the same definition of the same type of disease. Thank you very much.